Hi, welcome to The Restoration Couple. In today's video, we're turning this forgotten corner of the garden into the ultimate barbecue area. Stick around and we'll show you how we did it. If this is your first time to the channel, make sure you subscribe. Then you won't miss any of our videos, whether they're crazy builds like this or more sensible DIY projects around the home. So first job was to mark out exactly where we were gonna build and then we could cut out some space, get digging and lay our foundations. So with a bit of steel in there just to reinforce things, everything was leveled off to the top of the shuttering to make sure it was ready for the stonework. Then it was time to pick through a load of stone which we've salvaged over the years from the renovation of our house. We can then take that down and start dry fitting that before we mix up our mortar. Stonework finished, I could top it off with some limestone slabs which are left over from our patio. I cut those down to the width of the top of each of the walls with a bit of an overhang and then I mitered the corners to give it a neat finish. I'll cover all of the design for the barbecue in a future video where we'll go into it in much more detail. But the basics are two frames, one stationary and a second frame which moves up and down inside that frame. That means we can adjust the heat of the barbecue not by moving the grill but by moving the fire bed below it up and down inside the fire pit itself. I lined out the top half of the fire pit with some fire bricks. They're pretty thin, but they're just gonna help protect the stonework from getting too hot. When you line it with fire bricks, the charcoal just seems to last a lot longer and you get a much more efficient burn because it holds that heat so well. So instead of getting this made in stainless steel elsewhere, I made it up in mild steel with eight mil rod. Mild steel performs really well for cooking. You just need to clean it, season it like you would a cast iron pan, and then there's no issues with rusting. 
For the mechanism to work, for it to raise and lower within the fire pit, I decided to find an old vintage wheel. This is off an old clothes mangle, and I was able to strip the endless layers of paint that have been put on over the years, and we could use that. I then ground down everything, gave it a really good clean, and then we could move on to painting all of the non-food areas with a high temperature paint, and that was just gonna keep it from rusting and keep things nice and clean and tidy. One thing that lets down many fire pits is airflow. I've drilled a core through the bottom and I can then put a little mini leaf blower in there when needed to really get the fire going. I then did a dry run in the workshop to make sure the mechanism worked as it planned. I used some thicker gauged steel cable in the end because that was a little bit thin. I jumped up some 4mm cable and it was much stronger. After a quick test run, then I could seal the top to make sure that limestone was sealed from any oil that would spit from the barbecue and move on to the furniture. Now I wanted a set of furniture that fit around the fire pit to allow us to all sit around and cook at the same time. It also made the fire pit safer for children because it was up off the floor slightly higher and it means no one's going to go stumbling into it. So there was two tables to make and there was also four benches. We used reclaimed scaffold boards and some galvanized steel legs and hardware. As you can see, they slot around the fire pit and the mechanism works to enable you to light it, control it, and then once the grill is down flush with the stone, the fire actually lowers another 400 millimeters lower so you can really slow cook things. And I'm also now planning to make a lid for this and also a rotisserie that slots on top. And again, you can lower and raise the fire pit below. Then into the evening, you can shift away the tables, put the benches back, and then you can change it over from a barbecue to this idea of having sort of a family friendly fire pit that you can sit around. Now, I've already had a whole host of questions come in on this build, so I will be doing a question and answers episode in the future. But there's a few things to point out at this point. It's a smaller barbecue than our main gas barbecue, but that's fine. You can easily sit eight people around this table and all have space to cook on there. Also, the reason why the fire pit is higher is just that idea of being able to sit around it with the tables, but also making it a bit more family friendly than something that's only just off the floor and there's risk of people or things falling into it. And of course there's far easier ways to build a barbecue. I've done a simple brick barbecue build on the channel before and really this was just setting myself that extra challenge. It got me to weld for the first time, it managed to get me back into doing some stonework and it tried to create something which I hadn't really seen done before. And hopefully we'll be showing you in more detail in the build video series, which will be coming out next week.